Hello, everyone. I'm going to go quick because I have a lot of slides, a lot more than Neil, actually. Um, Neil's leaving, but I'm actually going to give the, uh, the Uber Suggest story real quick. So um, back then, I had a senior living website, and I actually bought a senior living website that was ranking high for the term senior living. And he saw me buy it, and the week after, we do a podcast recording, and he's like, I bought something, too. He bought Uber Suggest. So that's the story behind how he got Uber Suggest, which now does a very healthy, a good amount in, in EBITDA. Um, so timer's good. Um, I, by the way, on my preview, it's like a miniaturized version, so it's hard to see my preview. But um, this is who I am. So um, I actually, Neil's actually my better half on the podcast called Marketing School. And so that's a daily marketing podcast that we do. I um, have another one called Leveling Up. And then my ad agency, we actually have competitive companies. Um, What's that? Move to my left. How's this? How's this? Cool. Um, so my ad agency, we mostly focus on SaaS. It's single grain. I'm not going to talk too much about that because there's a lot that, that I have to share. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about SaaS shortcuts uh, for SEO. But even beyond that, um, kind of how the sea change is happening within marketing and how you have to think about it a little differently now. So Neil, obviously, his talk was mostly about PLG or product-led growth. Um, mine is going to be, I'm going to be talking about one of the websites that I have that drive, last year drove about 20 million visits, and then I'm going to share um, how one single page, I'm going to share a story around that, how um, one of my friends has a single page that drives about a million dollars in profit a year. It's the same playbook, it doesn't matter if it's for affiliate, it doesn't matter if it's for SaaS, doesn't matter what type of business you have. Um, so again, I have like 80 slides, so I have to go fast. Um, and then I'm going to close it off with how marketing is changing, so we'll see how quickly I get through this. So this is the site in question. I'm not lying. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm a little off. 18.3 million, but who's counting? Um, that's a survival site um, that I'm a minority shareholder in. I'm going to give you the breakdown on how we are spending money, what our output looks like, and how you can get started uh, on this as well. So this, in terms of our monthly expenses on this site that drives the 20 million visits a month, we're spending about $40,000 a month, and um, the team looks like it's basically a, I think it's gonna, there's going to be a breakdown in a second, but it's basically 11 articles a week that we do. 50% are brand new pieces of content, and 50% are content refreshes. And so most people, when we think about content marketing or SEO, we often think about, hey, like we should be producing new content all the time. That's actually not reality. We should be looking at content that's actually performing. You can use a tool like Ahrefs. You can use Neil's Uber Suggest, whatever you want to use. But the more you actually refresh, the more bang for buck you're going to get. Um, and HubSpot, because we just talked about them, they spend a lot of money hiring people that are just specifically refreshing their content. Okay. Um, so these, this is our team composition just for spending the, the 40, 50 grand a month for, to get the, the 20 million visits. This site drives about 3 million a year just off of affiliate revenue. That's not including other revenue. Um, and so again, this playbook works. doesn't matter if it's for affiliate, SaaS. Um, I'm going to share some other examples in a second. By the way, I'm also going to share a little bit about how we're using AI for marketing school in a little bit as well. So um, stick till the end. Um, so we have an editor in chief. We have an editor. And then we have a chief content producer that will come up with ideas for TikToks, Reels, Shorts, and things like that. And that's the, the, those ideas come from the written blog posts that we do. Uh, and then we have a photographer and a videographer. So this is very simple, right? This is a team composition for a site that can drive 20 million visits uh, a year in, um, that's 20 million visits, and then 3 million in, in affiliate revenue. Um, expenses, it's a little higher than this now, 40, 50K a month. Um, and other than that, the main thing is content refreshing. You can use Ahrefs, that's the SEO tool. You can actually see your competitors to see how, how often they're actually refreshing their content. So there's a tool called the Content Explorer in there. So you just put their domain in there, and then you can basically see what percentage are they actually refreshing versus uh, new content that they're actually uh, creating. Um, no AI writers being used at the moment for this, but we're about to start using it. Um, but I will share the process for Marketing School. We literally just started doing this like a week ago. Just for some context on the Marketing School pod, we're about 2 million downloads a month right now, um, but we want to get that to 5 million views a month, and we think this is going to be a big piece of it, uh, in addition to leveraging some other channels that I'll talk about in a second. So this isn't just an SEO talk. Um, and... Obviously, when we have traffic at 20 million or even for the agency blog where we get a couple hundred thousand visits a month um, at the high point, we have a lot more optionality, right? So um, what Neil didn't mention, and I, I don't think he'll care if I talk about this, but he actually drives um, 
you know, tens of thousands of leads a month off of his blog, right, which drives a couple million visits a month. And so you have optionality. It's, it's how you choose to monetize it. And so what we haven't really talked about is how we really look at, sure, his main business is the ad agency, my business, main business is an ad agency, but that's just our monetization model, right? It's when you think about liquid death, what, what are they doing? Like a couple hundred a year in a million in, in revenue, right? But they're, they're a water company, right? But more so they're a marketing company. Um, so 89% of what the best creators out there are doing, whether it's a Mr. Beast or a Liquid Death or whatever, you build the attention first, you build the community first, and then you can figure out your monetization model afterwards, whether it's SaaS or whether it's something else. Um, doesn't matter, right? And then I wanted to share something else, but we're Time's going quickly, so I'm going to keep going here. Um, so this is a playbook that scales, but one key thing on how you all can get started with this playbook, I know a lot of us are bootstrapped here. Let's say you're six figures, seven figures, even eight figures or so um, in ARR. What you can be thinking about is if you want to get started, the very top one, if you want to start cl- scaling your content, that's my buddy's site. He's not paying me to say this. Um, his name is Ewan Fisher, and he will basically source the best writers for you. And when he told me, I was like, okay, that sounds like any other service out there. And I was like, yeah, I was like, how much do these writers cost? Well, he's like, five to 10 cents a word. I was like, okay, that means they're probably not great writers, um, because I think we've all hired writers around that range. Reality is, they're actually amazing writers, and they have a really good vetting process in the way they go about finding them. And we're actually hiring like another set of like 10 writers just by using contentteams.io. So it doesn't matter if you're writing about SaaS, doesn't matter if you're writing about crypto, doesn't matter if you're writing about plungers, that's the one that I'd recommend here. Um, Over the years, the last 10 years or so, I've been using the pro bloggers job board to find great writers. Upwork is great for finding more so short form video editors from like Philippines or India. They're actually really good. Um, and then marketer hire is if you want like the top two, three percent of marketers that have actually been like CMOs or, or leaders in companies, right? So this can be your stack over here without having to commit to full time headcount. And then you can decide where you want to go from there, right? You, you can often try before you buy in a lot of scenarios here when it comes to talent. Okay? All right. So next, this is one page. Um, you don't really know what it is, but it's, it's the, the, here's what I call it on the, uh, do I have a laser pointer? I don't have a laser pointer, but um, key thing is this page drives about a million dollars a year in profit, right? You can call it profit, you can call it a little different than EBITDA, it's pure profit though, okay? So I want to tell you a story around this and I'll, I'll kind of dovetail it into um, a, little, a little thing that we have going on later, but this one page alone, it's traffic value, the second number from the right is 460K a month, okay? So about $5.4 million a year if you were to pay Google for that traffic. And it ranks for about 3,300 keywords. So one page, I don't know if most people know this, but one page from an SEO perspective can rank for thousands of keywords, right? And that's why, you know, SEO is not the sexy topic du jour today. Like, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, organic is really good. Don't get me wrong. But it's the gift that keeps on giving, right? And so the little story around here is that... um, we do this founder's mastermind every year. It's about 10 of us. And one person has a holding company that focuses on pets. One is focused on other SaaS companies. Uh, one is a telecoms company, right? We all get together once a year and we just share on business. We're not there to just party. We're there to just learn. And then frankly, many of us don't drink or like to party, right? So on one of these trips, we actually, um, we're on a trip in Mexico and we actually went out to go look at manatees, turtles and all that. We're on a boat. And on my boat specifically, one of the guys, let's call him Bob, asked uh, Andrew, okay, I'm making up these names right now. Bob was like, hey, um, you know, so for your, your company, um, what keyword are you trying to rank for number one? And uh, Andrew was like, oh, I'm trying to rank for this keyword. And uh, Bob was like, okay, uh, what will you pay for that, right? And then Andrew gave an answer. Two months later, Bob was ranking number one for that keyword. And Andrew is basically, was, was that that amazing? <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> so, so anyway, that page, two months later, um, he's ranking number one for it. 12 months after that, it's doing a million dollars a year in profit. And, and every single year since then, it's been a million a year in profit. And the funny thing is, like, um, the top four results or so are, like, him and three of my other friends, and the fifth result is, like, me, right? And so, like, we, we're, all, we're all trying to get that, the, the, the cheese. My point of saying all this is that I'm not saying this is how you get a page that drives a million in profit. I'm saying it's the relationships that matter at the end of the day. This is why Nathan is doing this type of event. And this is why I, I do founder masterminds too, right? They, they go a long way. And so um, I like to put my head down. I like to work. But there's also a case to be made for this because stuff like this happens. Okay? Um, 
Bofu SEO, I'm going to run through this quickly. Um, so Bofu means bottom of the funnel. Tofu means top of the funnel. So top of the funnel would be like, what is SEO? Um, and then bottom funnel might be like SEO agency. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you an example of what works well for us and how we're ranking really well for, I think if you Google SaaS marketing agency, we're usually in the top three or five um, and how you can do the same thing too. So when we're producing content, oftentimes we think about, we have to be producing, you know, the, the biggest trending topics, right? The reality is, especially working in SaaS, you don't need to go super high level. The reality is you can go for more bottom of the funnel. It's not that competitive, right? So you can just use, I mean, you can take this, right? So you can be like, um, you know, whatever, let's say uh, SaaS open, or HubSpot, HubSpot's a good example. HubSpot versus Zoho, right? That's a good example, right? Um, or Paychex versus uh, Gusto or something, right? If you start going for these alternative keywords, use case, pricing, you'll actually see G2 does a good example of this. If you look at G2's rankings, they've occupied all this. There's G2, uh, finances online, all these comparison websites, but you can do the same thing too. And these keywords are usually not that competitive, right? Um, and they're high converting as well. And oftentimes when you look at the keyword volumes for these on these SEO tools, whether it's Uber's or Hrefs, they're often incorrect. Okay, so your mileage may vary. I'm just saying these work out well for us because you can see these are keywords that we rank for from an ad agency perspective, right? So CRO agency, best marketing agency, Google ads agency, right? Um, Neil does the same thing, right? So again, there's the copying piece. So we're all just copying each other. Um, but, and here's the other thing. If you actually have some capital, you can just go buy a website that has a high domain authority and then you know, put content on it or you can redirect it. That's a deeper conversation. I'm oversimplifying it right now, um, but this is what works for us. Neil talked a little bit about uh, M&A, so I'm going to continue to thread on that a little bit so we can talk about growth through acquisitions. Again, I'm oversimplifying this at the moment. Um, it's, it's not easy, but it's simple. Um, so there's many different ways you, you can go about structuring a deal. So if you want to go buy um, like a CRM out there, right? you can uh, sell or finance it. right? Or, and seller financing means that you can, let's say... Um, Let's say Kyle up here, right? So you're selling it to me for $100. I don't have $100. Well, I might say, okay, well, why don't I pay you $20 up front, but then the other $80 I'll pay to you over four years, and maybe we'll put some interest on it. That's seller financing. Um, deferred down payment. I don't have the $20 up front. I'm going to pay you two months later um, on that $20. Is that cool? You're going to say, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool, because we're cool, right? Um, and anyway, there's a lot of different ways to structure terms, um, but... We don't have enough time in this conversation. So for the sake of this example, let's say you're a pet SaaS company doing $3 million in ARR, okay? And you spend a lot on ads. You're spending a couple million dollars a year on ads. Um, or I guess you can only spend like a million maybe. Um, but point being, you find a website that has strong SEO. It's driving 500,000 visits a month, okay? And it's doing a million a year in revenue. You're like, oh, crap, I can't afford that. But it's doing 200K in profit. So you can afford more than you actually think, Right? So, again, I'm oversimplifying here, but on 200K in profit, let's say you put a 3X multiple on it, that means 200 times 3 equals 600K, right? That's the price of the company. You can actually do something similar where it's say, hey, hey, you know what? I'm going to put 10% down, so I'm going to put 60K down, the rest I'm going to sell or finance. And by the way, on that 60K, I'm going to defer it, right, over two months. I'm just giving you some ideas on how a potential structure might look. I'm not saying this is the end-all, be-all, by the way. Some of you are probably much better than I am. I've bought a couple things over the years. Neil's bought a couple things. I'm just saying, oftentimes, we think M&A is this very like, um, like opaque thing. But if you think about it from a marketing perspective, you're going to have a lot more leverage over other marketers. Okay? No, I'm going fast. I've got six minutes left. Um, I put in, I wrote a tiny check for Acquire.com. You can use them. He's not paying me to say this. Um, so it's like a little Zillow for M&A. Um, Ahrefs is a tool that I've been talking about over and over. Um, and if I wanted to buy a tool, I, I might just pull up Ahrefs over here and I might just search for um, best free SEO tools and I'll have an idea of what I want to target and what I want to go after. Um, you can do the same thing for your space, right? So best, you know, whatever your niche is, tools, and see what you can pick up, right? Especially ones that have good traffic, they have a good email list, whatever it is. Probably doesn't work for GDPR, but at least in America it works. Um, but that's one way you can go about it. Um, one final thing I'll say about SEO is that it is not dead, right? When it comes to links, people are like, oh, SEO is dead. Links don't work anymore. I'm telling you, I have a lot of friends. They, they're spending like a couple hundred thousand dollars a month on links um, because it works. The only problem is when you're running, let's say you're doing marketing. 
oftentimes we want to be able to track everything, right? We want to be able to understand what's the ROI of what we're getting. And paid media is actually very, um, it's very black and white. The problem with SEO, it's not black and white. You know, oh, you talk to an agency, it takes, it's going to take six months to do it, it's going to take forever, whatever. People rather just put money into SEO or into paid media, into what is tried and true. But the people that are actually willing to understand SEO a little more and willing to invest into buying a domain or, you know, um, you know, figuring out how to link build at scale, those are the ones that are going to able, they're able to drive a ton more leverage because you're not only driving a lot more traffic, but you're going to be able to retarget this traffic and you drive a lot more emails and you have this one asset, right? And in some cases, sometimes I think um, the website's on par in ter- with uh, the value of like a, like a business, right? Um, but those are few and far between. So that's that. Um, with four minutes left, we're going to move on from SEO and we're going to move on to where I think everyone should be going. I'm not saying you should go do this necessarily, but you should think about the angles here, right? So marketing is getting harder and there's only one question that you need to think about. And the question is, who actually knows you, right? Do people actually know who you are? And so you just had Neil up here um, and you know, there's a couple of my friends here. So you, I think most people know who Mr. Beast, they know Cody Sanchez. Um, these are all brands, right? I'm not saying you need to go out there and be a brand, but how can you, people still want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. I know people that have built $20 million, $30 million businesses just off the back of, of LinkedIn. Um, and so I'm going to talk about how we're doing it. So our content assets over here, I, I mentioned the podcast, uh, top left and right, and then we got our YouTube channel, two YouTube channels, and then we have our blog, right? These are our content assets. The other thing is LinkedIn organic, uh, Twitter, super strong right now, right? Especially now that Twitter shows the views. Um, only 2% of people actually post to LinkedIn. I don't think most people know that. And Microsoft wants to make the most of that acquisition, right? Um, so our content process, we're spending like 60 to 70 grand a month on our stuff internally um, at Single Grain, I believe. I think it's that range. Um, and we've talked about how you can get started on a budget. Um, we could talk about our reach as well. So marketing school, we're at about 80 million downloads um, total now all the time. And then my other one's about six or seven million or so on leveling up. And then um, our SEO, were, our domain authority is really strong. At a high point, again, we, we're getting a couple hundred thousand visits, um, and we're trying to bring that back now. And so we have leverage now, right? It's, if we wanted to sell the leads, we can sell the leads. If we wanted to double quadruple bar leads, we can do that as well. So that's why SEO is great. But then you start to layer on this other stuff, you're going to be really hard to stop. Um, by the way, on podcasting, if you want to buy ads on podcasts, the retention is better than anything I've seen. And so when like a YouTuber might say, oh, you know, 50, 60% is good retention on a long form YouTube video, long form being five minutes or so, this is like five minute episode, this is like 80, 90%. This is hard to beat. And so that's, if you do want to buy podcast ads, you can go about doing it. I'm not the best on Twitter, but if I put up a post, it does okay, 163,000 impressions. Okay, that's not bad. Um, YouTube, I think this was like during a quarter last year, 1.2 million views. It's not bad, right? We haven't really put our back into it. We're just starting to do that now. And then LinkedIn, we, 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 we did okay last year, you know, but there are a lot of people that, I have a friend that got 110 million impressions on his company page, his company page last year on LinkedIn. And he does about $4 million a year in profit, and it's like him and his wife working on that business. Um, by the way, the quick note on company pages, most people don't know this, but on LinkedIn, um, they will throttle you if you're posting many times on your personal page, but they don't throttle you on your company page. So food for thought. Um, don't talk about yourself all the time on your company page, but just add value. i got 90 seconds. Um, and platforms that have strong organic reach, um, the TikToks of the world. By the way, I, I was at a dinner the other night, and this one... I'll call him a kid. He's 25 years old. He does $30 million a year on his courses, and his funnel is TikTok to Instagram to courses. Doesn't run any ads at all, right? How does that work for SaaS? I have no idea. You figure it out. But um, food for thought. Um, You don't need to be a a prolific creator for this. Um, I'll leave you with this um, in the last minute or so. Um, This is a framework that we use all the time. So this is being recorded. I'm going to snatch this from Nathan. We're going to chop it up. I'm going to chop it up for shorts, reels. We're going to put it on the leveling up pod. Um, We'll we'll probably take Neil's episode, put it on the marketing school pod. This will probably go on the marketing school pod as well. Um, And so we start from the very top of video. We chop it up into short form audio, short form video, blogs. Um, We're going to promote it, right? We'll use our email list, um, whatever kind of channels that we own. And then if we want to monetize it later, whether it's for SaaS or services, we can do that. that's what we can do. Um, before I continue, and this might be actually where I stop, um, but this is our newsletter. There's 30,000 marketers. We share stuff like this every single week. It's completely free. You can subscribe to it. Um, one final thing I'll call out to you is that I was going to talk about the Founders Mastermind, um, 
we actually are giving away, um, you can apply. If you do a brain date, if you search for Eric Sue, my name, David, if you raise your hand over there, um, we're, those tickets are five grand, but we're going to comp a handful of those, so you can go talk to him about it afterwards. But uh, that being said, I'm going to stop here, and thank you so much. <laughs>